Well, hello there. What's your name? And where do you live? My name is Robert, and I live in Estes Park, Colorado, at the YMC of the Rockies. Have you ever been here before? Maybe with your family, or are you planning to come here someday? You know, one of the many things that I like about this place is that at nighttime, it's so dark that when you look up at the night sky, you can see hundreds, thousands, millions of twinkling stars. And they make you wonder what a miracle they are. And it makes you want to sing a song, a song that I bet you know, and that you know some hand gestures to. Is your mom or dad around, or your grandma or grandpa, aunt or uncle, or your big brother, big sister? Why don't you go ask them if they would like to join you and me as we sing some songs and hear some fun stories. We're gonna start off with Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. When the blazing sun is gone, when he nothing shines upon, then you show your little light and twinkle, twinkle through the night. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Then the traveler in the dark thanks you for your little spark. He could not see where to go if you did not twinkle so. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Hey, you're a great singer. Do you know the old man who, everywhere he went, he played Knick-knack, paddywhack. This old man, he played one. He played knick-knack on my thumb. With the knick-knack, paddywhack, give a dog a bone. This old man came rolling home. This old man, he played two. He played knick-knack on my shoe. With the knick-knack, paddywhack, give a dog a bone. This old man came rolling home. This old man, he played three. He played knick-knack on my knee. With a knick-knack, paddywhack, give a dog a bone. This old man came rolling home. This old man, he played four. He played knick-knack on the door. Who is it? It's old man. Well, come on in and be sure to bring your knick-knack, paddywhack, give a dog a bone. This old man came rolling home. This old man, he played five. He played knick-knack on a beehive. Bzzz. With a knick-knack, paddywhack, give a dog a bone. This old man came rolling home. This old man, he played six. He played knick-knack on some sticks. With a knick-knack, paddywhack, give a dog a bone. This old man came rolling home. This old man, he played seven. He played knick-knack up in heaven. With a knick-knack, paddywhack, give a dog a bone. This old man came rolling home. Hey, do you like bugs? We're gonna read a story a little bit later called I Love Bugs. See it back there behind me? Right in front of the deer. Maybe the deer's reading it for us. Well, you can see, all, of course, a lot of sort of animals out here at the Rockies. And uh, here on the campgrounds, you can see some baby animals, like baby deer, called fawn. And we're going to read a story now called The Cutest Critter of Them All, because they're all really pretty. You know, you can walk into the National Forest, or the National Park, Rocky Mountain National Park, right here from campus. You see all kinds of animals, and you might see some baby animals. We'll leave, read the bugs one a little bit later. But let's look at the cutest critter. A lot of cute baby animals here. Who's the cutest critter in the land? Is it a bear? Is it a bear cub sleeping? Or a fawn just learning to stand? 
a baby deer is called a fawn. Those you can see all over the campus at the YMCA. Is it a foal playing peekaboo? A foal is a baby horse. Or a baby bird with wide open beak? Oh, feed me, mommy, I'm hungry. Maybe it's a fox kit in black mitts. Or perhaps this pair of opposites, black, white, white, black, white, black puppies. Baby raccoons in a struggle? Or lynx kittens having a snuggle? Oh, isn't that cute? Is it a wolf pup collecting a kiss? I love you, mommy. What about a gosling learning to hiss? A gosling is the word for a baby goose, hissing before they honk. Then there's this bison calf getting a drink. Or a baby skunk working up a stink. <sighs> P.U. Babies are cute. That's certainly true. But I've searched this whole world through and through. And of all the young critters I ever knew, not a single one is cuter than you. And at the back of the book, we see the more pictures of those little babies. We can learn what they're called again. Remember, a baby bear is called a cub. And a baby deer is called a fawn. Oh, there's a baby bird called a chick. Chick, chick, chick. And a baby horse is called a foal. Here's a fox. When they're babies, they're called kits. What's that over here? Oh. It's a wolf. When they're babies, they're called a pup. A raccoon, I've seen that here on campus before. A baby is also called a kit, a baby raccoon. A lynx is called a kitten. A baby goose, do you remember, is called a gosling. An American bison, which some people call buffalo, mistakenly, the babies are called a calf. And finally, oh, who is it? It's the striped skunk. And a skunk baby is called a kid. Cute factor. Baby skunks look like tiny, cuddly versions of their moms and dads, but there's no need to plug your nose. These furry critters can't spray their stinky spray until they're eight days old. All right, how about another song here? For this song, you need to do some hand gestures. Get your pinky and get your thumb, okay? and let them meet each other. Hi, Thumb. Hi, Pinky. You've got a low voice. You've got a high voice. That's because I'm small. My voice is deep because I'm big, big thumb. Okay. Now, stick up your other thumb like this and your other pinky down here like that. Got it? And now spin this one up and let the thumb and pinky meet each other again. Hello, hello. And spin up, and spin up. Go up. Whoa, it's climbing up. I, I bet you might know what song we're about to sing because what was that animal, that bug, climbing? I almost said insect, but it's really an arachnid, a spider, right? And this is an itsy bitsy spider climbing up the water spout. This has hand gestures that you know, don't you? You can make some up if you want to or ask your big brother or big sister how those hand gestures go. Itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. Oh, what's that coming here this way? Whoa, it's Biggy Wiggy Spider. And he climbs like this up the spout. Can you do that? Climb up with the two big arms. Here we go, all the way up the water spout. Biggy Wiggy Spider.
piggy wiggy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the piggy wiggy spider went up the spout again. Ooh, what's that little tiny thing right there? What is that? Oh, pinch your thumb and your pointer finger together like that. And your gesture's gonna be like this because this is teeny wing spider. And he doesn't get up that spout very quickly, does he? Can you do that? How long does it take him to get up that spout? Keep going. All the way up, teeny weeny spider. Teeny weeny spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the teeny weeny spider went up the spout again. Let's do that again. Let's make him be tinier, teenier, tinier. Teeny weeny spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the teeny weeny spider went up the spout again. Here comes the normal itsy bitsy one. Itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. And Biggie Wiggy Spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the Biggie Wiggy Spider went up the spout again. Which spider was your favorite? Itsy Bitsy? Biggie Wiggy or Teeny Weeny. It's Teeny Weeny because that's my favorite too. Last time here, Teeny Weeny Spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the Teeny Weeny Spider went up the spout again. So spiders fall under the category of bugs. Before I told you they weren't called insects, they were arachnids. But all the little things, all those little animals we call bugs. And this boy likes bugs. It's called I Love Bugs. And here we see us some photographs of bugs taped here inside the book. I love bugs. Bugs, bugs, bugs. I love bugs. Bugs that creep, bugs that crawl. You see all the bugs in here? Bugs that hop or fly. I love to find them under rocks or watch them in the sky. These bugs paddle, this one weaves. Some make honey, and some chew leaves. Some bugs burrow underground. Others swoop and buzz around. This one's like a bit of bark. This one's like a twig. Cicadas buzz a summer song. Crickets dance a jig. I like bugs that blink at night or flutter around the back porch light. But this bug is the best of all. It's Ladybug. She loves to crawl. Bugs, 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 I love bugs. Here we can fun, here's some fun facts about some of these bugs here. Ants, some ants can carry more than 20 times their own weight. Wow, they're strong. The buzzing of a fly is the sound of its wings beating. 
The praying mantis is the only insect that can turn its head halfway around to look over its shoulder. Some cicadas spend 17 years underground. Unlike butterflies, most moths are active at night. The male cricket chirps by rubbing his front wings together. Ladybugs can have from two, can have from two to more than 24 spots. And if a baby sister bugs you, here we are, it's just because she loves you. Baby sister, I love bugs. All right, before our last story, let's do. The bear went over the mountain. Oh, the bear went over the mountain. The bear went over the mountain. The bear went over the mountain to see what he could see. And all that he could see, and all that he could see was the other side of the mountain, the other side of the mountain, the other side of the mountain was all that he could see. Our last story is a true story about a bear here in Estes Park. This is called B. Thomas the Bear's Rocky Mountain Chocolate Adventure. This is actually based on a true story. It had been a very busy summer for B. Thomas the Bear. He visited his favorite places many times to look for food. He had explored the trout stream, the local camping grounds, and his favorite berry patch. His very favorite berry patch. Now the days were getting shorter, the air was cooler, and the leaves were turning gold. B. Thomas the Bear was much hungrier and sleepier than normal. Ooh, B. Thomas the bear was puzzled. Then he remembered that it was almost time for him to take his long winter nap or hibernation. And he called it a hibernation. He decided to visit a very special place, his favorite place of all, the Rocky Mountain Chocolate Factory in Estes Park. B. Thomas the bear liked the Rocky Mountain Chocolate Factory because of all the wonderful smells from inside. However, the door was always locked. B. Thomas the bear was so very hungry that he leaned against the door to get a better look at the chocolate inside. When he did, the door moved, but just a little bit. Now, B. Thomas the bear was a very smart bear and still very hungry, so he used his long bear claws to reach under the door, and then he wiggled it. Much to his surprise, the door popped open. What good fortune! And wiggle, 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 wiggle. When he stepped into the store, B. Thomas the bear gasped. It was amazing. There was chocolate everywhere. Because when he wiggled the door like that, it popped open. There was chocolate everywhere. He knew just what to do. He went straight to the counter, stuffed his mouth full of chocolate, and went outside to eat. The chocolate was so good, but B. Thomas the bear was still hungry, and the door was still not locked. So B. Thomas went back inside the Rocky Mountain Chocolate Factory again and again and again. He ate all the cookie bears. He ate all the balls of joy. He ate all the crispy rice treats. He gobbled up every single peanut butter bucket. He ate and ate and ate. After the fifth trip in, he peeked through the glass case and he spied the very best treat of all. He jumped over the counter, careful not to knock anything over, and he ate every single bite of buttery English toffee. B. Thomas the bear ate so much chocolate that his belly bulged. At last, he felt full and happy and content. B. Thomas the bear left the store and slowly sauntered away to his favorite napping place. He curled up, closed his sleepy bear eyes, and drifted into hibernation, dreaming of his favorite chocolatey treats from the Rocky Mountain Chocolate Factory. The end. And definitely sweet dreams. And at the back, they have a little more detailed version here. You can see the security camera 
of the shop, recording the bear at 4 a.m. So we can change our, the words to our last song. The bear went in to Estes Park. The bear went into Estes Park. The bear went into Estes Park. The bear went into Estes Park to eat what he could eat. And all that he could eat, and all that he could eat was delicious chocolate. Delicious chocolate. Delicious chocolate was all that he could eat. And that brings our story and song time to an end, boys and girls. We hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you someday out here. If you come to the YMCA of the Rockies in Estes Park, look me up in the library. If you don't see me here, come on out to the Rocky Mountain National Park, and you'll find me on one of the trails out there. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.